Happy Sabbath, friends. Hi, everyone. How are you? Welcome. We are on the last chapter of the book, Steps to Christ. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We want to thank God for the rains. It's raining, so we could not be outside. Nonetheless, we are thankful to God for the beautiful weather and the showers of blessings. Yeah. This week, our topic is rejoicing in the lord and that's mm. chapter 13 the last chapter of this wonderful little book so before we begin i ask uncle Lee to pray for us uh let's pray our father we're at in heaven like to thank you this afternoon for allowing us another chance to share your word may you please uh, open our minds and our hearts so that we can see the type of joy that you give us and we can rejoice in you when all is said and done, may our names be found written in the book of life. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, um, you know, it's said that in this chapter, it's generally talking about our Christian walk. Mm. It's um, what they call, I've used this word before, mpako um, You know, the food that you use when you're traveling on a journey. Um, the food that that's packed for you usually it's dry stuff that doesn't go bad too quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, something that you'll need that you might actually use for the entire journey on your way back. Um, this is what the Lord is now giving us, and it's saying rejoicing in the Lord. I found it to be quite interesting. So it talks of how the children of Christ should be representatives of Christ everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that sense, rejoicing. It talks of how persecution. It speaks of Matthew five. And then it still talks of rejoicing in the Lord. The central theme is rejoicing in the Lord, regardless of everything that's going on around us. Yeah. So we'll dive more into it as we go. Um, let's get right into it. I have the next one. Mm-hmm. I have the first one, actually. Um, so it says, in every one of his children, Jesus sends a letter to the world. If you are Christ's follower, he sends in you a letter to the family, the village, the street, where you live. Jesus is dwelling in you. Jesus dwelling in you desires to speak to hearts of those who are not acquainted with him. Mm. Perhaps they do not read the Bible or do not hear the voice that speaks um, to them in pages. They do not see the love of God, his works, and everything. And he's saying that, but if you are a true representative of Jesus, it may be that through you, they will be led to understand something of his goodness and Mm. be won to the love to serve him. Christians are set as light bearers on the way to heaven. They are to reflect to the world the light shining upon them from Christ. Their life and character should be such that through them, others will get the right conception of Christ and his service. Mm. I found this to be so interesting that Christ is speaking through us. Christ dwells within us. Mm. So instead of Christ then saying, okay, I will take out my hand, he then says, I want to use Mara's hand. Mm. So in every situation when you're walking in the street, imagine what would Jesus do? Mm. When you are at school, imagine what would Jesus do? And then that's what you are supposed to be doing. Because we are letters that Christ has sent out. But these letters have life. They are not just letters of paper. They have life. And the life that lives in them is the life of Christ. You know, it studies so well with the first chapter of the Desire of Ages, where it is saying that Christ received of God, and everything he received of God, he received to give to us. Mm. Similarly, we receive everything from Christ, and whatever we have received from Christ, we live to give to others. You you know, it's, it's such a, a mind-blowing thought to say, am I representing Christ always? Some situations when my emotions get the better of me, am I being like Christ? Constantly when I argue with Uncle Libs, am I being like Christ? And obviously the answer is no. So how would Jesus resolve issues in that situation? This is what we should be asking um, Christ to say, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing? Then it says we are set as light bearers to reflect Christ. Now, reflections work perfectly or light shines brightest where there is darkness. Mm. Often it has been um, an excuse that, no, I live in a place where there is darkness. I'm in university. The environment around me is not conducive for holiness. We are lights that are needed most in the dark environments that we are. Thank you. 
Thank you, baby. Um, I'll read the next quotation which says, If we do represent Christ, we shall make his service appear attractive. Mm -hmm. As it really is, Christians who gather up gloom and sadness to their souls and member complain are giving to others a false representation mm. of God and the Christian life. Thanks. They give the impression, impression that God is not pleased to have his children happy. Mm -hmm. And in this they bear false witness against our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who are, okay, not I've seen people, and even sometimes maybe we get to that point where we make people feel like if they're going to accept Jesus, then their life is going to be that one of carrying burdens around, mm -hmm. being sad always, no smiles, no happiness and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even a life of poverty to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to say is, if you look at both extremes, you'll find that there are people like that who follow Christ. There are people like that who don't follow Christ. The life to Jesus doesn't mean that uh, all our problems are going. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that problems are going to follow us as well. It means we are going to be happy because we know that Christ is in control of us. Mm -hmm. Most of us, we come to Jesus, but we come carrying our burdens. And we continue carrying our burdens around. Mm -hmm. So we don't really experience, we don't have the personal experience of how Christ can lessen our burdens. That peace that he gives us, mm -hmm. we don't have it. So we always postponing that experience by saying, you know, I've come to Christ, you know, I, I have these problems. I'm still looking forward to say, Jesus will give me a million dollars that will give, then I will start be, I will be happy. Jesus will give me a house, a husband, a wife and everything. Our happiness is conditional and we don't have Christ in us, but it's not supposed to be like that. Last week we learned to say, you know what? Look at other things in your life. Is there something that you can be happy about? Mm -hmm. Today, when others, are, not when others, when you are coming from work, um, or when you are coming from church, or when you are doing whatever, the rain, you were, uh, you were not um, affected by the rains. You actually have the rains outside there. We have the hope that um, our dams will fill up, Instead of crying to say, you know what, I had planted my maize this year and it's not uh, going to ripe. But we are going to have water to drink. We still have life in us. Mm -hmm. Let us be happy. Let us be cheerful. So that's the call that we are getting here to say, you know what, if we are going to be followers of Christ, let us not reflect the negative that we think that um, we have in us. Let us always reflect what Christ is doing for us um and you know by reflecting by on the positive things you will see that you have so many things to appreciate and you always be cheerful it doesn't only benefit those who see you but you yourself you also benefit when your heart is cheerful it is said um a cheerful heart is like medicine to the bones when you are not feeling well make sure you are always happy don't reflect uh, on the bad side of things and if we have people around you who are either depressed, who are not uh, feeling well, make sure that you always keep positive things on them. Be sensitive as well. Uh, tell them the good news about Christ. Uh, the next... Um... Thank you, sweetie. Sorry. Right. Um, I just wanted to add that, you know, um, looking at this text, it's saying that many Christians think that... Um, this is how Christianity should be conducted, mm -hmm. that you put on a sad face. Mm -hmm. But I think they don't know Jesus as much as we are supposed to know him. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand what happiness or rejoicing is. Mm -hmm. The world has given us a picture that when you're happy, you've gone to the club, you're smoking your shisa. Mm -hmm. What is it called? That. Mm -hmm. you are... I don't know. It's, I, I don't go to the club with... You? with with me no <laughs> you are wearing certain things you are posting certain things that's that's a cause of being happy and mm. that's happiness they have forgotten that happiness is found in the simplest things mm. in the simplest blessings of life this is what brings about happiness so like liberty spoke of to say when it rains we should be happy even though sometimes it's right the fact that you have the breath of life itself is something that causes you to be happy you'll be surprised to note that the highest number of 
depressed and unhappy people are actually people who engage in the things that we think bring about mm. happiness. And so the Lord, <laughs> in his wisdom, knew that Christianity would bring about happiness. Mm. But not happiness from acquiring things, doing things, having things. Mm. It would be happiness that would emanate from giving. And it is this circuit that we need. It's called the circuit of benevolence. Uh, beneficence, where it said that God begins as the originator of everything mm. and then he imparts to every other single thing. I don't know if you've ever seen a depressed bird, mm. maybe when we've domesticated it and it's by yeah. itself, but when it's out in the world, it's happy, it's singing songs, and this gladdens our hearts in turn. This is what Christ was trying to explain when he said that we should be happy always. How are we to be happy always? By giving others things. You know, I was reading, someone shared a quotation with us, which was saying that the best way to help someone who is depressed, apart from taking them to the garden, is um, letting them do a good deed for others. Mm. You remember? Mm. You should let them do a, do a good deed for others. Mm. You know, or initially in your mind, you're thinking, why would I be happy if I give someone my dress? Mm. But the satisfaction that comes from doing that has the effect of gladdening the heart. Mm. So now when the Bible says, rejoice always, and again I say rejoice, it is saying that you will not meet circumstances. You will not live without circumstances that cause you to be sad. No, mm. you will encounter them. But in those situations, your response should be to rejoice. Mm. And how then do you rejoice? You do the good deeds that we have mentioned. You trust in God like what Uncle Nib said. And I think so having that picture of saying, what is happiness according to God's standard? What is happiness according to the world's standard? Which happiness do I want? Helps us to then have the ability to rejoice always. Mm. Thank you, baby. Um, I will just um, read. I had explained some of the things, mm. but I think it um, it will benefit others if I read the quotations. Okay. They say, "Have they have there not been some bright spots in your experience? Have you not had some precious seasons when your heart throbbed with joy in response to the Spirit of God? Mm. When you look back into the chapters of your life." Mm experience do you not find some pleasant uh, pages mm. are not god's promises like the fragrant flowers growing beside your path on every hand mm -hmm. will you not let their beauty and sweetness fill your heart with joy have you ever been in a relationship with someone who just looks at the negative side you know where you now asking them you know what i know i'm not perfect i know the life is not perfect but at least I have eight, nine things out of 12 that I do well. Why can't we con concentrate on those things? 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then I'll move on to the other one. It says, mm -hmm. it is not wise to gather together all the unpleasant recollections of a past life. Mm. It's iniquities and disappointments. To talk over them and mourn over them until we are overwhelmed with discouragement. Mm. A discouraged soul is filled with darkness, shutting out the light of God from his own soul and casting a shadow upon the pathway of others. It's so sad that uh, that's what happens. You know, um, people who were committing suicide recently, they will tell you that I had these voices, a lot of things that were coming, I'm in darkness, a lot of things that are happening. When we open that door to darkness, more darkness will come in and mm. everything. Let's invite the light. Let's focus on the bright side of life. Mm. Then you see that we will actually find more things. Um, like Mara was saying, you know, um, we have a garden and we actually planted saying, are we going to have um, uh, much harvest, peanuts and stuff. And like everywhere else, it didn't rain. Then uh, she had a sunflower, which was growing in the garden. Mm. And we put less of those. But today, uh, every day these days, as we go to the, to the garden, we see that sunflower smiling. It doesn't have one smile, it has so many smiles. And, you know, it gladdens our heart. We have even forgotten that we have uh, peanuts that are drying. Right. Yeah, 
So it's something that you should always look up to. And yeah, God says we should go back to nature and get lessons from there. I always encourage people to say, whatever space that you have, if you don't have much space, find um, a little pot and put some seeds there. When it's growing, you find yourself getting this satisfaction and you see the power of God and you always have something to smile about each and every day. Amen. May the Lord bless us. I will move on to Mara's next point. Thank you, sweetie. Um, I, I, Uncle Lib shared a quotation from which um, Sister White had a vision. There was a lady who was distressed mm. and then she had a vision. Um, so she wrote to her and said, ah, okay, I'm having this problem. I'm feeling discouraged. I'm depressed. And then Ellen White had the vision where she saw roses. Mm. But she noticed that this lady was constantly looking at the thorns and not the roses. Mm. So you know, they were working in a beautiful garden full of roses. She could not pick the fragrance. She could not see the flowers. She was focusing on the thorns, just saying, oh, no, there are so many thorns. Oh, no. And, uh, and then <laughs> this is when she then wrote the words that Uncle Leeds shared with us. You know what? Mm. Life has just taught me to say, Troubles you will always have, have, and the Bible has said it. Mm. Not that I don't get discouraged. Best believe I do get discouraged, mm. but I just cried out to them. I need time, and I'm fine because I know it's going to come. So I think this is the same approach that God wants us to take to say we know that troubles are sure to come, mm. but let us not allow ourselves to be weighed down. Let us prepare. I always speak about this, and you know, it it makes sense the more I repeat it, to say prepare for terrible times. Mentally prepare. Tell yourself terrible times are going to come. But then you make a conscious decision to praise God. If you prepare for terrible times while in the terrible times, you will doubt God, most certainly. And so this is where um, my next quotation then feeds into where it says, when we seem to doubt God's love and mm -hmm. distrust his promises, we dishonor him and grieve his holy spirit mm. we've been told that grieving the holy spirit is only when you repeatedly do the same sin and do that but here it's saying that when we seem to doubt not when we when we seemingly doubt by our conduct mm. when god is saying no keep the sabbath then you say ah mari but i'll lose my job mm. let me just go on sabbath you seem to doubt god's promise that he will provide for you mm. so when you seem to doubt you grieve the holy spirit I think it makes sense because when you seem to doubt God, the promise that he has made, the reason why you are conflicted and you even need to think about going to work on Sabbath is because the Holy Spirit gave you the conviction not to do it in the first place. Hmm. So these things then connect together. Uncle Libs is seeing some numerous, like a thousand, birds. <laughs> probably 200. But yeah, numerous birds just flying past here. Hmm. So we, I wish I could just take a video, but it's too late. Mm. Nonetheless, so it's saying here, when we seem to doubt the love uh, of God and distrust his promises, we dishonor him. How would a mother feel if her children were constantly complaining of her, just as though she did not mean them well, mm. when her whole life's effort had been to forward their interests and to give them comfort? Mm. Suppose they should doubt her love. It would break her heart. How would a parent feel to be thus cheated by his children? And how can our Heavenly Father regard us when we distrust his love, which has led him to give his only begotten son? When parents love us, they don't give us their all. They might say, I gave you the all, my all, I gave you the best years of my youth, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they just mean they've given you more than they've given anyone else. Mm. But it's not their all. Mm. But now with God, when God gives Jesus, he literally gave his own. Mm. Literally. Mm. And you know, when parents love their children, there's a possibility that they cannot express their love because of financial constrictions. Mm. They cannot express their love because of physical inhibitions. Mm. But with Christ, <laughs> when he says, I love you and I've loved you with an everlasting love, there's no impossibility for him to withhold anything good from you. Mm. You might want a bicycle. And I've always used it. You might want it because I always wanted a bicycle. Always wanted a bicycle. So you might hey, you might want a bicycle and say it's good for you. Mm. Right? And then you go to your parent and you say, Oh mommy, I need a bicycle. Say, sorry, Mara, I can't get you a bicycle now, but I'll get you one later. Mm. 
your mom can't get you a bicycle even though it's good for you because she does not have money to get you a bicycle. Mm. But when you go to God and say, Daddy, I want a bicycle and it's something that's good for you, that will ensure that you make it to heaven. Mm. It's a good and perfect gift. God has nothing that inhibits him from giving it to you. Mm. So why do you distrust him? If he has not given you anything, it's because it's not what's best for you. Mm. At this point, if he has not given you a husband, it's not what's best for you right now. I'm sorry I'm saying this because I have a husband. But just trust God on this one. He has the best plans for you in your head. Don't ever think evil against God and imagine that ah, God withholds blessings from me but mm. he gives Anani, you know, he loves you so much and he wants to bestow everything. So if he did not withhold everything he had, his only son, why would he just withhold a house, mm. a car, your country, or whatever it is you're praying for? Trust God. This is it for this one. Let's move on to my last quotation. Mm. Angels are listening to hear what kind of report you <laughs> what kind of report you are bearing to the world about your heavenly master. Let your conversations be of him who liveth to make intercession for you before the Father. When you take the hand of a friend, let praise be on your lips and in your heart. This will attract, attract his thoughts to Jesus. You saw it saying, let your conversation be of him who liveth to make intercession for you before the Father. Mm. I ask you, when your parents say they love you and they've given you their own, do we not have parents who still sacrifice their time that they should have with their children for their careers. Mm. Do we not have parents who, okay, not both parents, of course, there are different scenarios. Please note that I accept that there are certain things that prompt parents to work. But say your mom says this, sometimes your mom has you, she's raising you, and she's also pushing forward her career outside of other external factors. Mm. But Christ literally lives to make intercession for us. Mm. Did you know that when Christ came to earth and um, died for us, he let go of all the other titles and responsibilities that he had in heaven and took up the priestly responsibility. Mm. That literally means that he said, you know what, I'm a king, but he's going to receive the kingdom again that he will share with us. Mm. But in terms of the rulership and everything that needed to happen with regards to the kingdom, he said, Lord, wait. I have children that I need to be interceding for who are on earth, who are busy sinning, <laughs> who are busy sinning. So right now, my career literally is to ensure that these children are okay. And I ask you, what report are you making of Christ now? Mm. So this is what is being said, that when you see your friends, are you telling them of the Lord's goodness? Mm. Or do you just complain, ah, the world is difficult, yeah, the Lord has forsaken us, what, 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 what? We should be praising God and telling people that we believe that there is a God who loves us. And by so doing, our friend's mind is lifted to Christ. Mm. So if your friends that are always stressed, ask yourself, if your, if your wife is always stressed, ask yourself, what are your conversations about? Are you telling of Christ? Are you telling her that Christ is good? Maybe that the one person may not to pray for. Amen. Please praise God. God is good. By myself. You don't have any reason to descend. Mm-hmm. I uh, read my last quotation. It says, "Happiness that is sought from selfish motives, mm. outside the path of duty, is mm. ill-balanced, fitful, and transitory. It passes away, and the soul is filled with loneliness and sorrow. But there is joy and satisfaction in the service of God. The Christian is not left to walk in uncertain paths. He is not left to vain regrets and disappointments." If we do not have the pleasures of this life, we may still be joyful in looking to the life beyond. Um, there are two, three points there. I'll just try and summarize them. And I hope you really get these ones. We are made to save others. What will, what's going to um, make uh, the heart of Christ to be so happy and satisfied is seeing you and me in heaven. Mm. He gave his life for us. So the life of sacrifice, the life of saving others, you know, angels in their billions, they are so happy. They are always waiting to save us, mm -hmm. always waiting for us to offer prayers and God to say, do this for Liba, do this for Mara. Always there to save us from whatever. 
that's what makes them happy like mara mentioned if you would really want to be happy start serving others start giving others so if we are going to to seek happiness from being selfish that's why you see i know we all want to experience that but we we we, we don't realize that there is no happiness in it to be so powerful so rich that you enjoy things that others don't have there is no happiness in that they are good maybe pictures and maybe publicity there is so much of it but there is no happiness that's why you find that some people are always miserable or oh, they are doing it over and over again like they are so obsessed with taking money from other people with either killing other people being jealous about just trying to show because there is no real happiness inside them real happiness in that's how god created us is in seeing other people being happy you know when we fight with mara and she is said even when she's not talking with me and we, i'm not talking with her i'm not going to be happy in in this house not because mara is fighting with me like he's punching me or anything but because the one I'm supposed to give happiness, that I'm supposed to share happiness with, is not happy. Mm. If you are at work, you get there, no one greets you, everyone is just like quiet and angry. You're not going to be happy because we are meant to share. We are not meant to be selfish beings. We are meant to be with others and share our lives. Then the other thing is, if we don't get things here on earth, and unfortunately we have reduced our life goals and uh the purpose that god created us to mere uh material things mm -hmm. so sometimes we are always aiming at this this money houses cars and everything and we are always chasing those so when we don't find them we don't see cars in heaven we don't see our houses like in heaven we we don't really see god giving us those things yet they're there yes yes there are actually better things there mm -hmm. yeah. so we we really don't find happiness in looking forward to heaven mm -hmm. but here it is being said let us look up to heaven jesus actually said i'm going to prepare a place for you mm -hmm. so where i am you may be there also mentioned mentions mm -hmm. yeah Just a place. exactly mm -hmm. so let us always look up to christ his promise is sure um i pray that we all seek for a personal experience with Christ, please, please, above everything else. Amen. So that we can trust His word. When He promises, we will know that He is sincere and it's true. May the Lord help us. Mara is saying, I've talked too much. I hope she's just going to pray and not add uh, <laughs> any more points. Yeah, like, yeah, See like, you all next like, week, guys. Love, love you all. Um, ah, I in view of the glorious inheritance that may be his, what shall men give in exchange of his soul? Mm. Matthew 16, verse 26. He may be poor, he may be poor, <laughs> yet he possesses in himself a wealth and dignity that the world could never bestow. Mm. The soul redeemed and cleansed from sin, with its noble powers dedicated to the service of God, is surpassing in wealth. And there is joy in heaven in the presence of God and the holy angels over one soul redeemed, a joy that is expressed in songs of holy triumph. That is the last quotation in this book. Let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful steps to Christ that we've been going through the first quarter of this year. We have come to an end. May you be with your children who are going to study this book. May you Open their minds to the truths you want them to discover. May they help us, Lord, in our sanctification journey and prepare us for heaven. This is our humble prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you for reading this book with us. We are done. Sure. Um, See you in the next book. Uh, yes. Yes.
So I think the last Sabbath of March, mm. this is the first one of April, mm. we are starting a new book. We can't wait. Mm. Um, and it's going to be a longer book. Yeah, very long book. Very long, but quite deep. Ah, it's very deep. Yeah, extremely. I think it's one of my favorites. You know, I just read like literally every page. I just went, mm. 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 and I'm like, baby, <laughs> it's, it's that good. So I hope you join us. Uh, may God keep you safe. And may he stay your mind on him always. Bye. Bye.